Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name's Raymond, and in this video I'll be taking a look at the little monster that came for lunch and stayed for tea by Robin Lees and Steve McKenzie, published by Strawberry Studios. Now this is a small two to four player racing game with some hand management, and it plays in about 30 minutes. So in this video I'll show you how to set up the game, I'll explain the rules, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. But first, let's take a look at what's in the box. So let's first take a look at the box. It is a relatively small box. It has nice artwork on the front. It says that it's for two to four players, plays in about 20 minutes for ages eight and up. And the back of the box shows you some of the cards that you will find inside and some of these tokens here with a bit of uh, explanation of what the game is about. So let's open it up. Okay, so first of all, we find the rules of play, which is just a very small booklet. It tells you the game overview and the game setup, how you play the game in different phases, and then how to resolve the winner. And that's it. So it's very, very light. Just a few pages of rules. Then we have these tokens here, the punch board with all these monsters printed on both sides. And you can stand them on these stands to turn them into little standees. And next we have a pack of cards. That is basically the whole game. So I'll just quickly open this up. So there you go. You've got plenty of cards with lovely little artwork on them of all these monsters and they have very common names like Henrietta, Jeffrey, Irene, Francine, Martin, Cecil, Lucy, etc. So that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty funny. And it's very colorful, lovely little artwork. So you have these monster cards there and then you have your action cards basically. So they have different values and they do different things. So there's plenty of those with all kinds of food for the monster's lunch. And that's what's in the box. Let's set up a game. To set up the little monster that came for lunch and stayed for tea, you divide the cards into the monster deck, which have monsters on them and this backside, and a food deck, which of course has all kinds of food and this back. You shuffle both decks and place the food deck in the middle of the table with room for a discard pile next to it. Then you randomly deal two monster cards to each player and they can then reveal those cards by placing them in front of them. Players then take the tokens matching their monsters and when all monster cards have been dealt to the players you take the remaining cards and use the backs of those cards to form the table that they will be having lunch on. One of the corners of the table is the starting space. So let's say this is the starting space and all players place their monsters at the corner of the start, like so. So let's say in a three player game, we have six monsters and they all start at the same spot. And each of these plates is considered one spot and the final spot is the one across from the finish over here. Then you deal two food cards to each player and you may take them in your hand and look at them. Decide who gets to start and now you're ready to play. Little Monster is in essence a racing game and so the first player to have both of their monsters across the track at the finish point wins the game. Players take turn in clockwise order starting with the starting player and a turn is played in three steps. First you have start of turn monster abilities such as Charlie's here who has at the start of your turn if Charlie's is alone in her space draw one extra food card. So whenever any one of your monsters has this at the start of your turn phrase, you resolve that first. Next, you draw a food card from the deck. 
and there is no limit to the number of food cards you can have on your hand. However, after drawing a card, if the total value of all your food card exceeds 30, you must perform the next step, which is to feed a monster this turn. Whenever the uh, food card deck is empty, simply reshuffle the discard pile and form a new stack. And then the third step is to feed your monster. This is not an obligatory step, but uh, unless you have uh, more than 30 value cards on your hand. And what you do is you play cards from your hand until you reach a total appetite value of 15 or more. And then you may choose one of your monsters one space forward, like so. If this makes your monster reach the finishing space, you can remove it from the table and place it on your card. A monster that has finished eating may no longer be the target of any monster abilities or food card actions. Now, if you played food cards with more than 15 appetite points, you must flip over one of your played food cards face down and check the value of the remaining face up food cards again. If the total appetite value is still over 15 points, take the face down food card back into your hand and flip another face up card face down. Then repeat this until the appetite value of the face up food cards you have played becomes 15 or lower. After doing that, you must resolve all of the actions of the remaining face up food cards that are in front of you. You may resolve those actions in any order and once you have resolved all of them, move all of the food cards in front of you, including the face down food card, if there is one, into the discard pile of the food stack. A player can choose the order in which they want to place them into the discard pile. After performing the feed your monster step, you may, if you can, perform this action again on either the same or another monster. Now there are two monsters in the game that change the appetite value they require. So Francine here has a small appetite and when feeding her she requires only 12 appetite points to move one space forward. And there is also a card named Kenneth who requires 20 points but he moves two spots. So when feeding one of those two monsters all of the previous rules apply as if the appetite value was that of the monster, so 12 or in Kenneth's case, 20. Many card effects will refer to a fastest or slowest monster, such as uh, this card, your fastest monster moves back one space and your slowest monster moves two spaces forward, for example. And this simply means that when there are several monsters on the board, the fastest monster is the one closest to the finishing spot and the slowest monster is the one closest to the start. This does not include any monsters who have already reached the finishing space and are removed from the table. They are no longer considered to be in play. A monster can never be moved further than the finishing space or further back than the starting space. If there is a tie for slowest or fastest monster, then none of them are considered fastest or slowest. Some cards will refer to your fastest monster, while others will refer to the fastest monster. So that can be a monster from a player other than yourself. Now, whenever resolving an action that targets the fastest or the slowest monster, and there's a tie, so there is none, then the action on that card is simply ignored. This is true for both actions and monster abilities. If you cannot resolve a food card action or a monster ability in full, you may not resolve it at all. The only exception is moving a monster a number of spaces greater than the actual spaces left on the track. In such a case, you simply move the monster token to the finishing space and ignore any leftover movement. And like I said, the first player to have both of their monsters over the finish line wins the game. A few important rules to remember are that the rules on the cards always override the general rules of the game. Actions on a food card are mandatory unless the card states may. If an action on a food card cannot be completed, then the entire action must be ignored. And if the text on different cards conflict, the active player resolves the cards as they choose. If both your monsters are on the same space, or you only have one monster in play, then neither of your monsters are said to be your fastest or slowest. Always discard used cards face up in the discard pile. 
and if you feed your monster, it must move. The rules also state no backseas. Once a monster moves, it stays moved. And those are all the rules for a little monster. Let's go to my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on Little Monster by Strawberry Studios. Let's start with the presentation. So the quality of the components is very good. It's mostly cards. They are of a thick quality. They have a linen finish and they have very bright colors. And the standees as well, they are quite thick and they have these transparent stands. So that works very well and looks nice on the table. The artwork is absolutely gorgeous. I love the colorful monsters. There are uh, lots of them. There are 14 of them and they are very cute and nicely illustrated. And also all of this different uh, food looks very yummy. This game really makes you feel hungry. So it looks really nice on the table. Presentation is absolutely a big thumbs up. The theme is funny. You've got these monsters. You've got a big table and they're all coming to eat on the different uh, plates and then when they're finished they're actually at the end of the table and you take them off the board and the first one to finish both of their monsters wins the game. I kind of like that theme, it could have been anything, but this really has uh, a very cute and lovely feeling to it and it's very family friendly. Now the gameplay is where this game really shines. I really enjoy the simplicity of it. You just keep gathering food cards until you think you have enough to advance one or maybe even both of your monsters. There's a maximum of uh, 30 or actually that's the maximum 30 points. If you go over, you have to spend cards to feed one of your monsters at least. And I really like the fact that all of these cards with their different values have different abilities. So you really have to carefully pick which cards you want to play to get to 15 to feed one of your monsters. And then if there's over 15 points, you need to flip over one of those cards. So that is also something you need to consider. So if you don't exactly have 15 points, you don't get to play all of those abilities. And maybe that's something you purposely want to do. So you really have to read all of those cards decide which of these abilities you want to use, which is in your best interest, and then play those cards and you know that if you play over 15, one of them will be flipped over and discarded at the end of that turn. So, and then you have to pick in which order to, uh, to um, resolve those abilities. So, and then different things happen. And you really have to pay attention to that because sometimes you might think you, you have a plan and you think, oh, okay, I'm just going to advance my characters. But then all of a sudden, your character ends up with another character that has a special ability that says, hey, when someone else enters my spot, this or that happens. So you really need to take into account the special abilities of the other monsters as well. So there's a lot of text going on. So you will be reading a lot. You will be looking at all those abilities of your own and other players' characters. And you will need to remember all of that before playing your food cards. But that's really where this game uh, takes its strength. I really enjoy doing that. The game is relatively fast, so the replayability can vary. You can play this just once and call it a day, or you can say, well, that was a quick little game. I had a lot of fun. I'm just starting to understand how to play all these cards. So let's play again. And I really like playing this with kids as well. So it is almost, in essence, it is a kid's game, I think. It kind of teaches you how to, how to count because you can't have more than 30 points and you need to have 15 to feed your monster. And if you play uh, more cards than needed and you flip one over and it's still more than 15 you take that flipped card back and you flip another one over so that's kind of a mechanism that teaches you don't play too many cards than you actually need so that works well especially with kids usually you'll just figure it out before playing them uh, so you can play this with adults as well and it's just a quick uh, quirky little racing game with a funny theme and great artwork and yeah, I really enjoyed this. And you can really tell when you're playing this with kids that they pick this up rather quick. They, they would learn really fast which monster does what and which kind of food does what and how many points that is. So yeah, you'll, you'll catch on pretty quickly. So uh, gameplay is absolutely really cool. 
Now there is one downside to this game and that is of course because of all those abilities this game is very language dependent. So you do need to have a very good grasp of the English language to be able to play this game. So if you have kids that don't speak English it's gonna be difficult because you, you can't just go uh, explaining all the cards because they'll have their own cards and they don't want to show the cards or you have to play with an open hand to teach them but it's a bit of a hassle so you really do need to have a, a group of people that do understand how to read English. So all in all this is a very enjoyable little light racing game with some interesting choices to make during play and it is great to play with kids unless you don't know English of course. So I'd like to thank uh, Strawberry Studios for giving me this review copy. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and if you hit the bell icon you'll also get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.